Hi there, my name is Faye from Wing Canvas and today I'm going to show you the materials that you will need if you are a complete beginner starting to use acrylics. Acrylics are super, super versatile. They're a great medium for beginners. It's almost very, very hard to mess up with acrylics because you can just paint over them. The one thing about acrylics I need to warn you about, especially if you're a parent, is that it does not come off clothing very easily. So make sure that you have yourself a good apron or an old t-shirt when you're painting and, you know, stay away from expensive furniture. So if you are just getting started, please, please do not go on Amazon or to your local art store and buy a huge set of 48 colors. They usually come in those small tubes. They look amazing and very appealing. You get all these colors under the rainbow, but chances are you will not use most of those colors. You will run out of your white and your yellow really quickly and a lot of the other colors will go to waste. They're more for paint by numbers. So if you really want to learn how to mix colors, I would suggest getting the minimum amount of colors instead of the maximum, okay? So starting with paints, I would recommend getting a big tube or a big jar of white. So titanium white is a really good versatile white. Look at this huge jar of white that I have. Um, get yourself a big tube because this color runs out the most. Second color that runs out the most is your yellow. This is a primary yellow. If you can't find primary yellow, you can find cadmium yellow light or lemon yellow. All of those are pretty similar but your primary yellow is one of your primary colors. So very, very necessary. Grab yourself one of those. And then the next primary color you might think is red, but it actually is magenta. So magenta is a true primary color. Usually there's darker magentas and brighter magentas. So get the brightest one that you can find. If you can't find a magenta, primary red is your next best bet. And then for your blue, I like to use primary blue, or if you can't find primary blue, phthalo blue is a really, really good substitute. And with these three colors, you will be able to mix all of the colors under the rainbow. And then the last color I would suggest is a black. So I have a big jar of black. You don't need a big jar. You can get away with a small jar because black is very, very strong. So you don't really need a lot of it. If you want to buy more colors, the only other color I would recommend getting just because it's very convenient is a brown. I have burnt umber. So burnt umber is a nice rich brown and it'll just save you a lot of time if you don't want to mix brown every single time. So grab yourself a burnt umber. When you're working with acrylics, having a medium is really helpful because it allows you to thin out the paint without using water. So a medium is like a clear acrylic. This is a matte medium and a matte varnish. Usually they're the same thing. It allows you to thin out the paint without it getting a little clumpy, a little bit runny if you do that with water. Okay, so a small bottle of matte or gloss or satin, depending on what kind of finish you like. I like the matte. Get yourself one of these and it will really help extend your paints for a long time. So onto brushes and painting tools. You don't need a lot of fancy brushes. In fact, I would recommend if you're a beginner beginner, only getting a very small set and these are the absolute essentials. Get yourself a nice big flat brush. So this is a one inch brush and this brush is just made out of nylon. It's really cheap. You can get one at the dollar store, at the hardware store. And you might be thinking, oh my goodness, it's so big. That is such a big brush, but I'm telling you, big brushes will save you a lot of time because if you're trying to paint a surface with a tiny brush, it looks overworked and it just takes forever. So get yourself a nice one inch flat brush. And then my absolute favorite brush is a half inch flat brush. So this brush, I think it's also like a dollar store brush. Dollar store brushes are fine. Just get yourself a flat half inch brush. They are very, very versatile and really, really easy to use. 
And then a nice big round brush. So this brush is a size 12. You can get a size eight to a size 12. Eight is a little bit smaller. Um, and don't get tiny, tiny brushes because they don't hold enough paint and they're very frustrating to use unless you're painting miniatures or something super, super small, okay? So you can see how big these brushes are compared to my hands. And sometimes if you like to paint small, you can get yourself a set of these small brushes. So you can see, you know, a set like this might be about $15 or so. It comes with some round, some flats in various sizes. So these go from size six to a size one. And then to mix colors, uh, unless you're mixing very small quantities of colors, you don't wanna mix small colors with small brushes. Mix your colors with your big brushes or with a palette knife. So I suggest getting a palette knife. Even if you're a beginner, these things are great. They save you a lot of time. You can use them to clean your palette. You can use them to mix your paint. You can use them to take paint out or put paint back in. And they're really, really helpful. You can also use these to paint. So get yourself a palette knife. This one is one of my favorites. It's just like a big round one that is a little bit pointy. Another one that is a nice one to have is one like this. It's very similar, except it's not round. It has an edge here. Okay, so you don't need many, you just need one palette knife to get yourself started. They're about five to $10, uh, very affordable. So those are all of the painting tools that you will need. And now let's talk about palettes. So the nice thing about painting with acrylics is you can use any kind of palette. Like you can use a piece of cardboard, you can use you know, the top of a salad container that you get, uh, you know, those plastic ones, just, just raid your recycling bin. You can mix acrylics on anything. Uh, but a really, really cheap and easy alternative is using a clipboard. You can see here, I have a, just a regular clipboard uh, with a sheet of wax paper on it. So you can get your wax paper at the dollar store, usually comes in a roll. You just, you know, take off a sheet and clip it and now you have a nice surface to mix your paints on. And afterwards you can just fold it and put it in the garbage. Okay, so that's a really, really uh, nice alternative that is very affordable to use. Probably one of my favorite mixing surfaces just because the cleanup is so easy. Uh, I don't really like those plastic trays that you can get. Uh, those are better for watercolor. I really dislike washing those after using acrylic on them. The next thing we'll talk about are surfaces that you wanna paint on. There are two types of surfaces when it comes to acrylics. You can paint acrylic on top of anything. You can paint on top of rock, wood, you know, <laughs> masonite, anything. Acrylic sticks to almost anything. Um, but if you wanna paint on canvas or panel, uh, for beginners, I would suggest using canvas panel or canvas board. So this is a board, you can see how thick it is. These are excellent for beginners because they store really well, they're very durable, and they you can pop them in a frame if you really like them, you can paint over them, and they're very cheap, right? So you can get these for about a dollar to five dollars depending on the size. And the other kind is a stretched canvas. So this is a brand new stretch canvas. You can see the plastic is still on it, um, but you can see that this type of canvas is a little bit more fragile. So if you're gonna store these, don't put them on anything sharp uh, because it will go right through. The nice thing about these canvases are that you can hang them without a frame. So that's the benefit of painting on these ones, uh, but I would suggest one or the other to start. You can also get canvas paper if you prefer a paper surface. And some other accessories I would get for acrylics is get yourself some masking tape. So masking tape is great, especially when you wanna paint straight lines or you wanna tape off a border or something like that. So masking tape is great. And also a really nice thing to have when you're painting with acrylics is a piece of chalk. So you might be thinking, I'm gonna be drawing with pencil. Why would I use chalk? Um, actually, pencil is a terrible tool for painting with acrylic because you have to erase it and all those eraser bits get stuck. 
So chalk is great because you can draw on top of your paints and if you don't like it, you can just wipe it off. So chalk comes in handy. If you are a beginner, remember you don't need to buy expensive paints. You can buy the student grade stuff. You can get your brushes at the dollar store. The most important thing is just to get started. And once you've used up that first set of student grade paints, then you can reward yourself with some really nice brushes and some higher quality paints. So I hope that was really helpful. I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, here are some other videos you can check out next.